you've been talking about moving away from the ego and the dangers of egoism. But in fact, the, the word ego actually just means self. It's the Latin word for self. And self is also the word we use for Atman. And this idea of that the ego is bad, it's an idea which can be abused, I think, with teachers who want to manipulate their students. Regularly saying, this is just your ego. It, it can, that can be disempowering in a way that's not actually helpful for the student. If we entertain the idea that the ego is not a bad thing, you just follow your ego, maybe that would not be a disaster. So do you have any response to that line of thought? Is what, what exactly is so bad about the ego and how is it distinct from the Atman? Well, the word ego is used over here in the context of the word ahankar. We don't have an English equivalent for ahankar. So we use ego. Now if we find out along the road that ego means self, then we have to say that we would have to use the word ahankar. But assuming that ego means ahankar, let's use it in the context of the word ahankar. And then your question if following the ego would actually be that harmful. We would have to first understand what ego is because there is no clear description. We can attempt one right now. I would say that ego is that which society slaps onto the individual the moment they're born and start to grow. The more complex a society is, the bigger the egos of the individuals that grow up in that society. Why so? Because the more complex a society is, the more it wants to increase its wealth, the more capital wants to multiply itself. The more it wants to multiply itself, the more it needs the individuals in that society to desire. Now, of course, you can have inherited ego in the sense of your genetic inheritance. Certain characteristics that, you know, that make you do certain things which are egoistical in nature. Again, ego being equivalent to ahankar. Now, when an individual grows up in a society where the ego is fed when the individual is made to desire more and more and more and more. And where the individual is, is impressed upon that fulfilling of desires is what their actual raison d'etre is their reason for existence is to fulfill desires. When the individual is raised to believe that, then ego is fed, ego is grown, and they then have to deal with ego. Now what happens is that as you follow that ego, you can observe, and as you give in to that ego, if you are a spiritual seeker, which means you're a sort of a scientist trying to find out what's going on with you, you'll find out that the more you give in to ego, the more your suffering grows. So then, what else do you have to, to, to reduce that suffering? Feeding the ego or fulfilling those desires does not seem to be reducing the suffering. So then you'll be looking elsewhere. 
where do you look? You look to see if there's anything that you can relate to that would help you to reduce the suffering. And at one moment, you stumble upon the truth of your existence, the soul, the Antar Atman, that which actually is your inner master, your guru, the source of love for that whole system. Now, if you start to tune into that, what you realize very fast is that the suffering starts to go down. The general mass of suffering that you're experiencing starts to reduce. So, why then would anyone in their right senses choose to go with the ego? The idea that following the ego is also a way of being. Of course, it's a way of being. If you embrace suffering, then it's a way of being. Suffering is something you connect with. So then you embrace the suffering that comes from following the command of the ego. In such a situation, you have this confusion because I'm suffering. So then if I, if I follow, if I go with the ego, isn't that then the way to the truth of my existence? No, it isn't. It's a confusion that has been, that is a little over a thousand years old. You probably know that, I don't have to tell you. But it's an image that is projected to serve capital and it's spread right from a thousand five hundred years ago when it was first chosen as this main image to relate to. So the way you find your way through this jungle is if I'm suffering, Somewhere ego is at play. The more I tune into the truth of my being, the less I suffer. So if a guru, and you brought up that example, if a guru brings up the idea of, you know, uh, oh, that's your ego, oh, that's your ego, and so on. There are many gurus who may misuse it, just as there are many who use it. What someone else does with it is actually irrelevant to your own realization. It's what you do with it, with the idea that ego causes suffering. You know what I mean? Because you can, you can, you can create all kinds of theories about this and uh, all kinds of scenarios. But finally, it's about what is going on within you? Are you tuning in to the truth? Or are you serving the ego? And there's nothing else there in that discourse. It's you, the truth, and the ego.